viewers, it, uh, Crystal here. I'm just here because I wanted to make another video for you. Uh, and this one is going to be a real life example of statistics that you can use, um, you know, to make statistics because I've made several videos on statistics and people might think, well, what can I use statistics for? And so I decided to make a few real life examples of things that you can use statistics for. So this is going to be a health crisis tracker. So you can take some particulars about a person and determine whether you think they're going to have a health crisis and how much money they're likely to spend on their health. So basically in the UK we have the NHS. So the NH health services for the most part is free at the point of service but I just thought well I'll go ahead and make up a table of how much money they're likely to spend on their health in a year depending upon their age and certain criteria and I didn't list all the criteria but we've got the name of the person and these are just hypothetical people we've got their age We've got whether they're obese or not, because if a person is obese, that's definitely going to affect their health. We've got uh, whether they have hypertension, that's going to affect your health. Whether or not they have diabetes, uh, whether or not they've ever had cancer, if they're a smoker or a drinker or a drug user, uh, how much money they're likely to spend on their health. But in the UK, uh, since health care is free at the point of service some things some things are free at the point of service not all things and uh, in addition to the probability that they're going to have a health crisis and that's just something just hypothetical you know I'm sure insurance companies have a lot more sophisticated uh, software that they use to determine whether a person can get insurance or not because an insurance company doesn't want to pay insurance so if a person has a lot of pre-existing illnesses either they're not going to give them the insurance or if they do there is going to be really high premiums so this is what we've got we've got the name you'll input the name you've got the age you'll input the age and then whether obese is going to be a one or a zero so if they're obese, it's one. If they're not obese, it's zero. So this is going to be really sort of like Boolean logic. If they've got hypertension, it's going to be one or zero. And again, this is all hypothetical. So one if they have hypertension and zero if they don't. If they've got diabetes, it's going to be one or zero. So uh, one if they have diabetes zero if they don't. I added a column so uh, called ever had cancer because more and more people are getting cancer now. Cancer is an autoimmune disease. You can get cancer and go into remission and so that's why I decided um, I'll put in a, a column about whether or not they had cancer because that's obviously going to affect their health. So if you've had cancer once, then there's a good likelihood that you're going to get cancer again because I was speaking to somebody a couple of months ago and she said that she had colon cancer twice. Want to know whether or not they're a smoker because if you smoke, that's going to predispose you to certain health conditions as well. Want to know whether or not they're a drinker. So if you drink, that's going to predispose you to certain health conditions conditions. Um, want to know if they're a drug user. And um, yeah, because if they take drugs, that's going to predispose them to certain health conditions. I'm just going to take one person. I'm going to make that a zero. And um, you want to know how much money that they spent on health. And so 
this is just a hypothetical and the thing is is that um in the UK it's gonna and sorry in the US it's gonna be more significant because in the US people don't get nationalized health care they have to either pay they have to have insurance or pay for it themselves so I just put a formula in here like if B3 is greater than 60. So if a person is greater than 60, then it's going to be sum of C3 to I3 plus 1 times 2,000. Otherwise, it's going to be sum of C3 to I3 times 2,000. So if they're over 60, you add a 1 to the number, and then if they're under 60, you don't. So this is Tracy here. Um, she has really high numbers. She has four numbers plus her age is against her. So they're saying that she would spend 8,000 pounds on her health. So I'm sure an insurance company would have lots more sophisticated criteria than what I've said. I just said they're going to spend two thousand pounds for each number, but you know you can set that number to anything you like if you have more knowledge of what an insurance company is does or what uh health health care does. Then you can put another number in there, like maybe 1,500 or even 3,000. But I just put 2,000 as a hypothetical number. And um, you, you can put any number you want, especially if you have more knowledge than me. And then the next thing you have is a probability of a health crisis. So if B3 is greater than 60, sum C3 to C13 plus 1 over count C3 to C13. Otherwise, sum C3 to C3 C3 to I3 over count C3 to I3. Um, and so basically what you're doing is you're calculating the probability that they're going to have a health crisis. So Poor Tracy over here, she's got three, she's over 60, and she's got three ones, so that means she's got four ones, and so that means she potentially would spend 8,000 pounds on health care in a year um, if she had to pay for her health care. So she has a probability of 57% um, health crisis. But you've got Mike here, he's 57, he's not yet 60, so that's zero, and he doesn't have anything, he's not obese, doesn't have hypertension, he doesn't have diabetes, he's never had cancer, he's not a smoker, he's not a drinker, he's not a drug user, so that's zero. So, in theory, he wouldn't have to spend any money on his health care, because he doesn't have any of those markers that indicate that he would have to spend health care. So the probability of him having a health crisis would be 0%, you know, which is good. So he's a healthy man. And then you can go down the list and then you can find people who have, you know, what their circumstances are. And so you've got other people that would spend 6,000 pounds on health, and 4,000 pounds on health. And you can see their percentage of um, health crisis is a 43% or 29%. So if you wanted to, I tried to do a pivot table before I started this video because I just wanted to see how a pivot table would work out, but it didn't work out. But what you could do is you could do a regression on this. So we could say you can... Uh, mark off the money spent on health and probability of a health crisis you can go insert then then what we'll do we'll go over here to scatter charts 
XY scatter chart. And then the uh, so let's just look at this. Just try that because that looks interesting. So, so you can see here it says that um, if they had a, you know, it says here if they spent eighty thousand, eight thousand pounds on healthcare, um, and that that doesn't look good. I don't like that. So let's just try another one. Because you can't always get what you want. I mean, we're just experimenting. So we can check a column chart. So a column chart, you've got nine people. And um, you've got nine people. And this just says, you know, how much money they're likely to spend on health care. And, you know, poor Tracy, she's spent the most money on health care if she had to spend money on health care. And number two, they didn't spend any money on health care at all. So you can, you can make a chart to give you an idea of, let me just say, You say health cost. And then now you've got your column chart there. And so, because if you were going to give a presentation about people who are going to potentially spend a lot of money on health, then this would be a column chart would be a good way to go. So if you're making decisions, you might say, well, Tracy's spending a lot of money on health care and uh, there's a 57% probability that she's going to have a crisis. So we're not going to give her insurance because we don't want to spend money. But Mike over here, he's healthy. You know, He's not going to have to spend any money on his health. So we'll give him insurance because that's what an insurance company wants to do. They want to give insurance to people who have the lowest risk. So Mike is going to have the lowest risk. So he's going to get insurance. And poor Tracy over here, he's got all these health conditions. Well, the, if they do give her insurance, her premiums are going to be really high. So that's just something you can do. That's just a real-world application on um, how you can use statistics to track whether or not you can give somebody insurance. And obviously, this is a really rudimentary example. A proper insurance company would have much more complex software that they would use to make these decisions. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what you could do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video because we've talked a lot about it. And uh, we've talked about um, probabilities and how much money you can spend on health. And I made a formula that enabled me to determine how much money a person would spend on health. So if you like my video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching my video. I look forward to making some more videos on real life projects that you can use statistics in Excel on.